Welcome to Room 442. It's like our Christmas day today, transfer deadline day, lots of moving parts. So these are the big ones. Now, I should mention at time of taping, Enzo Fernandez isn't official just yet. It looks like it could be that way, but forgive us if it doesn't happen. But uh, Jorginho's done, Sabitz is pretty much done, Cancelo's done, and Borro hey, is no close to being that. done as well. Albert Serra. Mikey, join me. All right, so let's start with this uh, Fernandez deal. Uh, 105 million we're hearing. Um, Albert, listen, from Benfica's standpoint, what a great piece of business. Well, this is incredible, and this is what they do, right? They get these players and they sell them off for big money. I was just looking at uh, the biggest fees that they've had since transfers uh, the past, like, 10 seasons, and João Felix is up there at 127 million euros, and this is around the same price. And just the season before that, Darwin Nunez, 80 million. So it, it, for Benfica, this is fantastic. I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Your player goes to the World Cup, wins a World Cup, young player at the World Cup, and now he's wanted by the best clubs in the world. Is he worth 105 million, though? I mean, this is a good player. Who knows? A good player, right? But he's not. There's much flash in this game at this point. Young enough, that could develop, of course. But he's going to be playing in that Jorginho role, you think, for Chelsea. Um, is it a good deal for Chelsea? I mean, I don't really know what Chelsea are doing. It seems like they're trying to get everyone they can get their hands on this transfer window. I think Enzo Fernandez is a fantastic player, and he has a lot of career ahead of him, and, you know, such a young player to win a World Cup. But 105 million pounds, I don't think so. But the game has changed, right? Like, this is the this is the day and age we live in. I mean, it's I'm only scared to see what happens with Mbappe whenever he decides to leave, because, I mean... 300 million for sure. It's, it's You wonder, right? Yeah, you, you really do. Um, Jorginho was a, a surprising one to a certain degree. Heading to Arsenal from Chelsea, 12 million pounds. Great deal for Arsenal. So experienced. Now, um, we often ask ourselves, how do you react if you're a teammate of a player and, and your mate gets transferred? Especially when you find out during a promo shoot. Uh, Sean, <laughs> roll the video. The smartest player in the squad is Jorginho, 100%. Because he have a... Uh, I don't think he uh, plays for Chelsea anymore. No? I think he's... Um, Arsenal, no? Arsenal, I, I would say Jorginho, no club, no? Or what? Or change? I think you've got to change it. Yeah? <laughs> but it's now or...? He's gone to Austin. Yeah, it's happening today. Yeah? I read he's yesterday. Been, there's like photos of him. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Cucurella, I love that video actually, it just shows. But uh, yeah, great deal for, for Arsenal to get a guy. They need depth in that middle of the park for sure. And let's face it, Chelsea need to also jettison some players as well. Yeah, I wonder what kind of role he'll play at Arsenal, right? Obviously, they need to add depth there, as you said, but is there a way that he finds his way into Arsenal starting 11? Because he's of that quality. Well, Jorginho that we've seen that plays for Chelsea, I mean, he's a, he's a starter in the Premier League. So for them to go out and get him for what, a reported $12 million about, that's a that's a great bit of business for this Arsenal side, and I'm loving the moves that they're making, even though they've had some misses. But for Chelsea as well, he's leaving into the seasons, again, $12 million. What a great, you know, financial balancing act they're playing there. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100 million pound players, 12 million for Jorginho. <laughs> but, I mean, he's a very good player, and Arsenal needs some experience too. And it's a very, very young team. So, for me, that might be the steal of the window, actually. I think so. I I can't find a negative in this transfer. Premier League experience, Europa League winner, Champions League winner. He won the Euro Cup with Italy. Um, he's a depth signing. Let's not forget, Arsenal are also in the Europa League. Mm -hmm. You're going to need this type of depth. And with Thomas Partey as well, his, his injury record, he can go down at any time. And you're going to need a player to fill in. And Jorginho is just that player. He can play single, double pivot with three in front of the defense. And he's got a pretty good goal scoring record when it comes to penalties as well. So I think all in all, this is a perfect signing for Arsenal. And it's very low risk because of the fee. As for Sabitzer to United, they lose Ericsson for, well, up until probably early May. Yeah. In comes Sabitzer from Bayern Munich. They, they got this deal done really quickly, but I think a pretty good deal as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Ericsson went down and Sabitzer's walking through the door. It's good. It's a good deal. Good money. And I, I can't fault them. I mean, I don't know, Mikey, are you like happy? They pretty much made a one for one sub here. Yeah, I mean, it's a need that they needed to address, but you can't necessarily replace what Christian Ericsson brings. So I'll be interested to see just how his dynamic works alongside a guy like Casemiro. 
for me, Sabitzer, he slots in into the 11 in Christian Eriksen's place because you have Freddie mm -hmm. and McTominay there. Sabitzer's just a little bit uh, ahead of those guys. And with Manchester United still competing in four competitions, kind of like what Albert was saying, you need the depth. And this is a great signing. Still lots of games left for McFred. So don't worry, <laughs> he'll get back in that midfield at some point. <laughs> you had to get that in there. I did, absolutely. All right, so yeah, busy, busy day in this transfer deadline. As mentioned, uh, at time of taping, there are still transfers sprinkling down, and uh, we'll get to those tomorrow. But when we come back, we'll rate some of the bigger name moves this January. It's room 442. The January transfer window slams shut and once again the Premier League has dominated the global football market. The English top flight saw the departure of Cristiano Ronaldo and an influx of young pretenders to his crown, with Chelsea co-owner Todd Bowley quite literally breaking the bank in pursuit of the next big thing. Having already snapped up Mikhailo Mudrik and João Felix among others, Chelsea are set to break the English transfer record with the acquisition of World Cup winner Enzo Fernandez from Benfica, as he mentioned earlier. Chelsea will have spent more this month than the entire Premier League combined in the January window of last year. Cody Gakpo was another World Cup star on the move. The Dutch hitman making the switch from PSV to Anfield, where so far he's been unable to arrest Liverpool's ongoing dip in form. On the other side of Liverpool, Anthony Gordon jumped the sinking ship that is Everton in a $66 million move to Newcastle. Not bad at all for a player with only seven goals and three assists in 65 Premier League matches. Other eyebrow-raising moves so far include João Cancelo to Bayern Munich. Cancelo set a new record for most touches in the season last campaign with Man City, while midfield maestro and European Cup winner Jorginho made the switch to London rivals Arsenal. January deals rarely have the impact clubs hope for, but English teams have half a billion reasons to hope this year will be different. Yep, so much money spent, much of it wasted probably. You see it every January, right? You see these deals going ahead and, and complete waste of money. So we thought we'd look at some of the biggest transfers from the last month or so and decide the most impactful, uh, the best value, the biggest waste of money, of course, and the most surprising transfers so far. Okay, so let's start with the most impactful transfer today, in, in our opinions, for whatever that's worth, okay? Um, Okay, so Sarah, you have Mudrik, Weston McKennie. <laughs> yeah, this is insane. Do you want to um, know uh, It's some respect to the goalkeepers there, and I've got uh, Ronaldo. I've got to ask you, Mikey, Weston McKennie, he, he just announced yesterday, most impactful. Most impactful signing. Reason being, obviously you have the American connection already existing at Leeds. Now you bring in arguably the most talented American, or second most talented talented American into the fold at Leeds. They're really doubling down on that aspect. So from a marketing angle, all in on the Americans, they're really tapping into that market. And from a footballing standpoint, Weston McKinney is a quality footballer. He obviously he played at Juventus, had some really good stints there, had some injuries over that time, but still a very good footballer. And Leeds is currently, let's face it, they're in a relegation battle. And Weston McKinney could be that piece linking up in the midfield with Tyler Adams, who already has that pre-existing chemistry. He could be that piece that saves them from relegation. So yes, he will be the most impactful. They actually got um, Adams to interview McKinney. I saw that. It was really good. I actually. saw that. Two, yeah. two, two buddies. All right, um, goalkeeper boy. <laughs> goalkeeper oh, oh, off boy. The, off the, so uh, was, what, the what's the definition of our impactful player here? Mine was a player that's been playing for the team. Uh, we're going? That's hindsight. No, we were predicting well, he has, it. So it's anyway, Geronimo really moved from Villarreal to Ajax. He's already played four games. He took over the number one job. Hasn't lost. Clean sheet man of the match in his debut. World Cup winner, Europa League Cup winner, I think, for Ajax. At the moment, based on the players that have been transferred so far in January, he's mm -hmm. made the most impact because he's also not only played the most games, but he's made his team better. Yes, yeah, yeah, very good goalkeeper, right? Not as good as uh, Martinez, apparently, no. for Argentina, but still pretty good. Uh, Sarah, quickly, uh, Mudrik, the big money move, of course. Yeah, I mean, we also are hearing now that Ziyech might be going to PSG, and with the situation at Chelsea up front, they have no one reliable. It's not even, we'll talk about Joao Felix soon, but Mudrik, we saw his first match against Liverpool. We know what he can do. The guy's fantastic and if he keeps his form and he's super young i think he can be absolutely crucial for chelsea and they need it yeah that I put, little, I, sorry, okay. the, the little cameo he made 
Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he looks so he, good. He, he looks like a he fantastic player. He does. He's got player. the pace right, yeah. I put Ronaldo because the impact his departure from Man U <laughs> has meant for that club has <laughs> been just enormous, right? They, they haven't lost since he left. They They're didn't playing lose. some of the best. Did they lost lost once? The Arsenal. Okay. Arsenal, but one still loss. playing really a lot better. Playing very well, yeah. yeah and, and one of the best teams in the league right now, suddenly because of his departure. Mm. Controversial. <laughs> All right, next up, best Always value. Best around. value in this year's window. Um, you got Depay, Sarabia, Daily Blind, and uh, Facundo <laughs> Buenarte. I don't even know how you pronounce that one. Uh, Daily Blind? <laughs> Daily Blind for the reason that he went there on a free. Yeah. From Ajax, his contract was coming to an end, and Bayern they picked him up. And he's it's incredible that this guy he's a, a constant starter for Netherlands, and he's so versatile. He can play in so many positions: center back, left back, in the midfield. And Nagelsmann has said he's going to use him in multiple positions. So you're getting a player like that on a free. You just <laughs> did your last pick based on what's happened already so far this January window. Daily Blind hasn't played for Bayern But this yet. is best value. Value. He's free. But he different... has, you haven't got any value. You literally haven't got zero value from Daily Blind yeah, by uh, your logic. But yes, but it's, it's the presence in the room. Ah, gotcha. He's yeah. a character player. <laughs> Weston McKinney, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Weston McKinney. I can't wait. I can't wait for that. When Leeds got relegated. He hasn't done anything. They're arguing your, your, your point. And Memphis paid three million. You know, Joao Felix just went to Chelsea. As we know, they need somebody up there that can score. And even though Memph Memphis to pay older, Sky scored goals. He was scoring for Barca up until the World Cup, scoring for the Netherlands. I think it's great. Whether or not him and Simeone are going to get along, it's a different story. <laughs> really quickly though, someone I just thought of and I completely forgot. Unahi, 8 million to Marseille. I think that's also going to be a fantastic value transfer. Sarabia? Yeah, Sarabia is a guy who had a lot of pedigree throughout the I don't know, the last four or five years. He hasn't really got a lot of playing time at PSG. I mean, for good reason. Look at the players at PSG. But you're bringing him in at about five million, and he's a player right now that's probably worth about twenty to thirty million. So just from a value perspective, I think it's a good deal for Wolves. Uh, the guy that I, I can't pronounce, um, <laughs> but, but we, we soon will, because listen, this guy comes from Rosario Central, right? Now, when McAllister came to Brighton, this guy was repped a lot higher than he was at the time, and Brighton have bought this guy in, a guy that most of us don't even know anything about. Brighton don't get these signings wrong. Undisclosed fee, it wasn't very much money. They'll get it right. Just because Brighton signed a player, mm. he is for sure for me uh, the best <laughs> value because that's what they do. Well, look at the last two January windows. They signed McAllister and Caicedo. Yeah, mm -hmm. precisely. And Caicedo's worth, what, 90? Yeah, well, leaving in the summertime. Oh, summer, yeah. What's McAllister worth? You know, a yeah. World Cup More winner. Crazy. All right, that's the fun one. The biggest waste of money in the January transfer window Joao Felix Danny Ings twice oh, wow give Danny Ings a break I, I mean, love Danny Ings by the way okay let's get to Joao Felix again you mentioned it before so we, we, we both I think we're on the same page here he gets a red card in his first game it's worth how much again? two million a two <laughs> million dollar pound card. sorry red card that's it's just the fact that it was worth so much we still haven't really seen what he can do with Chelsea we don't know if it's gonna there's only so many games left in the season and he wasn't really doing that well at Atletico so this to me it, it screams trouble and 10 mil for a loan yeah a loan deal craziness um Danny Ings 15 goals generally speaking each season mm -hmm. guaranteed why is it the biggest waste of money? Listen, I love Danny Ings. He's a proven goal scorer in the Premier League, but he has a horrible injury record. And David Moyes, upon signing him, said, listen, we want to pick a player and get Danny Ings because he wasn't a risk. What are you talking about? The injuries. And what happens? He plays 20 minutes for West Ham in his debut. He goes down. Now he's out for several weeks with a knee injury. So $12 million is a decent price for him, but based on his injury record, it's a waste of money. Yeah, I had a, I saw it at $15 million. I don't know what the exact fee is, but still, when you look at the other players that are going for around that value, I think it's a little bit over the price for Danny Ings. It could be that English tax. English tax, for sure. Can yeah, we but... do a, a special mention for Cody Gakpo? I was going to put him in there. <laughs> yeah. That's not even a shot at you. Jerry's it's still it's Yeah. Right. Yeah, but listen, it's, it's still early. He's young. It is early. But he does. But we're kind judging of, everyone does else. Don't scream, yeah. though. Hamas Rodriguez. Oh, great World Cup. Let's sign uh, in for a lot of money. We've seen this before, but uh, yeah. the uh, the jury is still out. All right, the most surprising signing of this 2023 January transfer window. Jao Cancelo, of course, to Bayern Munich on loan, confirmed today. Jorginho, Cancelo again there, and Mudrik for my, my, myself. All right, um, Cancelo, Albert, 
Sarah, no one really saw this coming, right? Until yesterday morning. Like, knowing that the transfer window is around the corner and it drops so out of the blue, mm -hmm. I think this one has to be the most surprising. You know, he's going, Mikey mentioned this yesterday, I believe, but he's also going to the club that Man City are also going to be facing in the Champions League. Like, what is going on? He had a falling out with Pep. This kind of, no one seems to know about this. Very strange. Yeah, it seems like Pep is, I don't know, flexing his muscles a little bit. Yeah, I think he yeah. had a, a bit of a, a tete-a-tete with Cancelo. He wanted to play more. He's like, no, I'm, you're not going to play. And it's strange for Man City because if you look at their depth at left back, there's nothing there. Sergio Gomez, Zinchenko's gone. Nathan Aki plays in that position. But if one of those players goes down, they're limited in that yeah. position. It's a, it's a very strange thing that's going on right now. But I think it's Pep just kind of setting his authority. Monkey, you had... Who did I have? Mujic. I had Jorginho. Oh. I had Jorginho. Jorginho, yeah. I mean, this one kind of came yeah. out of the blue, kind of like uh, Cancelo, yeah. right? You're selling him to sort of a direct rival there. Obviously, his, his contract does expire at the end of the season. But we've seen these two teams sort of link up in the past. And when you're, you're selling a player who I believe is still very important to your squad, in a way, unless they, they find a way to get Enzo Fernandez over the line here, it's, it's almost like they're waving the white flag on the season when a guy's so important to your team. I have Mudrik because he was going to Arsenal. <laughs> we all thought Arsenal. That's he right. even tweeted out saying how how he's excited to be going to to London and Arsenal and how he wants to go there. There is boyhood club. I'm not sure he said that or not, but probably. <laughs> but uh, we all thought for sure. Then the last second, Chelsea drop in there with with a ridiculous bid. Now listen, he's a great player and he's going to be a very very good player. I think for a long time. But it just surprised me that he was going to Chelsea in the end. And that was really the beginning, wasn't it, of this this crazy onslaught for Chelsea yeah. and top bowling in the transfer market. And it went maniacal and crazy, but uh, yeah, I have Mudrik there. But uh, still, it's been a good window. It's been an exciting window. Often they can be quite dull. Not the greatest deadline day, although at time of taping, of course, things could still happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. You know, time will be the great tester here as to find out who did what in this transfer window. When we come back, Albert is gone. Mikey takes over, looking at Canadians and what a week it was for Canadian footballers across the world. A pair of Canadians are tearing it up in Portugal, while Kyle Laren had a dream debut in Spain. It's another week gone, and it's another superb week for our Canadian stars. Let's get you caught up. Remember last week when we were chatting about Kyle Laren's move to Real Valladolid? Well, the Canadian international made his debut for his new club, and it was storybook. Laren came off the bench and scored a 90th minute winner to secure a massive 1-0 victory propelling Real Valladolid out of the relegation zone in La Liga. It's a dream start for Laren and hopefully it's a sign of things to come. To Portugal we go where a pair of Canadians had a week to remember. Up first, Chloe Lacasse notched four goals and an assist in a pair of wins for first place Benfica. The 29-year-old will hope to bring that goal-scoring touch with her on the international stage, where she'll challenge the likes of Christine Sinclair and Evelyn Vianz for minutes up top. Speaking of goal-scoring touch, how about Steven Estacchio? The Leamington, Ontario native scored not once, but twice this week for FC Porto, including a one screamer against Sporting to lift the Dragons to their first ever Tassa da Liga title. Estacchio now has seven goals and five assists this season and is rounding back into form which is great news for Porto, especially with a Champions League tie with Inter Milan looming next month. Yeah, so as I mentioned there, Stefan Estacchio is just in incredible form right now for Porto. If you take a look at his numbers this season, seven goals, five assists this year, that's more goals and assists than he had combined in his previous four seasons, which is just ridiculous to think about that he's sort of developed this goal-scoring touch and assist touch. Sharms, what do you think? Well, I mean, he's also a much better team, right? Porto is a legitimate, one of the top teams in European football, which helps, I, I think. But what is he evolving into? Is he changing his game? Is he becoming that box-to-box -box type player more so perhaps than when he was at Cruz Azul and obviously at Pakos before? Is this the coming out party for Stefan Estacchi at Porto, I wonder? And that's that's the the crazy part about all of this, right? Is Stefan Estacchi, we, we forget sometimes, just 25 years old. Yeah. And he went through an insane injury where he essentially had to, I want to say, rebuild his leg and, and sort of 
refine the way that he uh, he played soccer, but he's managed to overcome all of that, persevere, and he's becoming the player he is today. Is he now more of a goal scorer? I mean, he's learning how to find uh, to just pop up in the right areas. I think that's the most thing. I mean, we saw over the weekend he had a fantastic strike against Sporting from outside the box, which is great, but you don't see that every day from Stefan Osaka. What you are starting to see more and more is him popping up in the right areas and finishing off some some opportunities. So it's a great to see. It bodes really well. Uh, Sarah and Mikey mentioned there, of course, Carl Lahren at Valladolid. Mm, uh, there you go. Right. You nailed it. <laughs> but I mean, listen, it, it was a huge goal. Mm -hmm. Huge three points for this yeah. team. Um, I mean, they need more than Laren's goals to, to avoid relegation, you think. I think it's fair to say in Spain this year. But at the same time, you know, that's a, a big addition to a team that needs goals number one right now. Yeah, of course. And I think for Laren himself to play in, at, you know, in La Liga, this is huge. We're talking about a competitive, one of the best leagues in the world. So for him, even though I am nervous about where Valladolid will finish, I still think they will be demoted to the Segunda División. Hopefully not for his sake and for their sake. But this next you know second half of the season he's going to be playing you know the likes of madrid barcelona atletico even already valencia and for yeah. him to score on his first match with valladolid against a team like valencia who they're not doing well but still mm -hmm. you know you remember them as one of the big spanish clubs it's great for him and it's great for them it's a perfect start right and that's just throwing this back to you sarah Albert was saying last week when we were talking about Larry, and I sort of agree with him that this might not be the best move for him. Do you think it's it's a good move for Larry to go to La Liga, to go to a team that's fighting for, for that's safety? That's the thing. Going to La Liga, I think, is great because, mm. like I said, the competitiveness is there and it's a step above, you know, the Belgium league, but at the team by the elite that I don't think will be staying in La Liga after, you know, June. Maybe that's the issue, but I think that's a that's a... Bridge he has to cross in the summer, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Another person I mentioned in that chat was Chloe Lacasse, and she's really rounded into form with Benfica. Sharms, we saw over the last couple windows and most recently for Portland, Christine Sinclair. She's being listed now as a central midfielder. Now, I know you've watched Sinclair for a long time. I want to say her whole career, Sharms, <laughs> Pretty much, around. yeah. <laughs> um, did you see this coming? Did you see yeah, this as I, I the did, next step in her evolution? Because she's such a smart, intelligent yeah. footballer, right? She always has been. As much as she's had all the, the physical attributes and the numbers back that up, she's such a high football IQ that you kind of figured that she would prolong her career by perhaps dropping deeper into a different type of role. She can still score goals, but not at the same rate as she did for most of her career, of course. And, you know, I remember speaking to Beth Priestman about this about a year ago. Um, she was saying that, yeah, as we progress and Sinki progresses, she might take on a deeper role, play different positions. And she'll tell me when it's time to hang them up. And it's not yet. She still could be a key part of this team at the World Cup this summer. And I think for Canadian fans, really exciting. Yeah, how can you not be? She's the, in, in my opinion, just growing up watching Canadian football, she is the epitome of Canadian football still. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we get to see her still play with this, you know, soccer IQ you guys were referencing, she can create so many chances for now, you know, the younger girls up front, even though she has dropped back a bit because she still has that ability. She sees, I feel, what a lot of us can't see, you know? Yeah, exactly. Huge, huge year, of course, for her and the... Uh women's team across the world with the World Cup coming up this summer. All right, we're out of time. Um, what a day. Transfer deadline day. So exciting. We're back tomorrow and we'll look about the, the transfers perhaps we missed because these things keep filtering in throughout the night. No, we're done? I think we're done? Oh, you're sick of it? No, 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 not yet. More transfers to come. All right, more to come. All right, it's room 442.